Assalamu alaikum. I'd like to ask a question. Uh, you say talked about devices for kids. Uh, we tried to to minimize the time for for them to use the device, but when we go out, or families, cousins, society, they they tend to make it as we are trying to not show the world to our our kids. So yeah. so what is the best way for us to explain to the child that this is something good for them for the future and also at that point of time. Yeah. Uh, just bear in mind she is my our daughter is only five years old. So explaining is is yeah. something uh, not as easy as it seems to be. Thank this you. is a this is a great question and very common because even if you decide as a family Okay, these are going to be our rules. We only do it like this, and you only get this much iPad or this much PlayStation or whatever it is. That does not mean the other families that they interact with are going to follow your rules. And sometimes it could be your own family. You know, the cousins have a different rule in their home than our children. You know, um, so how do we deal with that? Um, it can be very challenging. Sometimes it makes you more isolated as a family. Your family starts to become more isolated because. You just can't interact with all these families with all these different rules, and they, your children get exposed to it. So, I mean, one of the things that we do that you can do early on is just kind of discuss the idea of like our family unit and kind of like we are a team. You know, this is our culture. We are who we are as a team. This is so we we may not necessarily do things the way that others do. By the way, this is the same conversation you have to have with your children, anyways. About Islam and dealing with other religions, right? Because they'll, you know, a five-year-old, my my children, five, four, seven, they ask the same questions. Like, how come so and so can do this, but we can't do this? You know, so this is a larger thing you have to discuss anyway. If you're a Muslim living in the modern world, even if you're a Muslim in a Muslim society, because not all the Muslims maybe follow the things that you want to follow, right? You know, they could say, oh, they're Muslim too, but they they got a Christmas tree. How come I can't get a Christmas tree? You know, like, there, and that's a true good point. They're both Muslims. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. All I can tell you is then, let's just consider it as our family unit, our team, our family. This is how we do things in our family, and this is why we do it. Now, are they always going to accept it? No, they probably will feel uncomfortable. But the more that you convey the message that in a positive, loving way, and just talk about how everybody's different, everybody does things differently. This is why we do it. In my house, like, um, you know, I I'll get really detailed about how this thing can affect your brain. I tell my children this can affect your brain. You know, do you want to be like this robot or something? You know, and that idea kind of scares them a little bit. So I'm not trying to make them too scared, but I want them to understand that if they're constantly looking at screens, their brain will develop differently than somebody looking at three dimensional versus two dimensional. That's that's known already in neuroscience, the way the brain will develop. So I I kind of tell them these points and let them know that it's sa same concept with candy. You know, I'm not gonna let you eat candy all the time. Once in a while, you can have candy. It's a good reward actually. You can use it as a good reward and motivate the behavior. Oh, you want to do all the you want to you want this goal? Okay, if I see this good behavior, this good behavior, that that will be your reward. That's how candy is used. That should be the same way that the iPads and the iPhones are used. They're used as a reward, a small little sugar at the end, not the actual meal that they're eating. Right? And we explain to our children, look, your teeth are going to fall out. You want? I show them pictures of rotten teeth. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do you want your teeth to look like this? It's that, the same concept. I tell them then, like this, the iPad is sugar for your brain. It's sugar for your brain, and you want? Don't you want your brain to eat healthy things too, and be healthy? And the thing is, most kids when they're exposed to something that's really healthy and natural, they like it. They just, as long as you remove the sugar and they don't get distracted by it. Like in our house, like if we take all the electronics away and we hide it, and then we just give them paints and colors and things to make, they'll spend all day doing that, you know, because they don't have any other alternative. And then they become really creative. They make a lot of nice art, a lot of like amazing drawings and things that, you know, if they were just sitting and looking at it, it's just a one way. You know, but when you make something, it's it's two way. You make it, somebody else comments on it. You think about it. So we try to um, give those kids those natural experiences, and then they actually 
will start to like it more, you know, because it has in the long term a better feeling associated with it. The sugar always has a high, but then it always has a low. When you're done with the candy and it runs out of your system, you feel kind of low and you're like, man, you know, like it was good for a short term. But when the child, you know, eats like good fruit or good food, they feel like it gives them something more. So a lot of this is just explaining to our children the long-term effect versus the short-term effect. And of course, the hardest thing for a child is to, you know, think in the long term, really just think in the short term. So um, you have to illustrate it to them different ways. Sometimes I show them pictures of people over time, you know, like the, the teeth example is a good example. You show teeth that decay over time. You show how people can get sick over time um, or get, you know, if they're just sitting and watching all day, how their bodies can change over time. So sometimes seeing that in a, in a picture idea, it helps them understand it better. Um, but in the end, sometimes there's not much you can say. If, you're, if one family is doing this and my family is doing this, sometimes in the end of the day, I just, there's either I try to get that family to conform to us just for this hour. I say, look, I'll tell my relative, look, we're spending lunch with you right now. Like, just come on, man, just for this hour. Can you let your kids just follow our kids' rules? Just for this hour. And then when we're done, you go. And the kids, they want to be together. You know, the cousins, they want to see each other, right? So that's a good motivator. Sometimes I'll, you know, you could tell one of the cousins, look, my son, he doesn't watch iPad right now. It's a school night. He shouldn't be watching iPad. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go. And then the cousin says, no, 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 don't go, don't go. And he says, well, if you want him to stay, we're going to have to turn this off. And so then he says, okay, fine. You know, he's, he's reluctant, but he doesn't want his cousin to go, you know. So we try to use other motivators to keep the, keep the kids, you know, in line. Of course, I know once we leave, the kid's going to go back to his iPad. But at least for that hour, they were following a, a rule that was closer to our rule. Maybe not exactly our rule, but it was closer to our rule. And then, um, you know, like I said, over time, some of these things, you know, one of my... Um, one of our relatives, the, the, the son actually came back when he was really wanting to see his cousins so bad, so bad. He said, okay, look, tell Uncle Omar we're not going to have any technology. We're just going to have art in the house because, you know, he really wanted to see his cousins, you know. So it actually ended up, like, changing his attitude in the other family, you know. So sometimes you can have those effects on it. Um, it's, it's also we can't always control how people parent their children, you know. That's going to be the a constant struggle because we parent our, we may be choosing to parent our child a certain way and then they go to school and they're going to see a hundred different parenting styles from zero to a hundred people who are so relaxed with their children and have no rules and the opposite extreme some parents are too much rules and too oppressive you know i don't think that's the solution either some parents you they have too much um, structure they decide everything for their child and the child has no freedom to choose these things. That also is, both of those extremes are bad for the child because it, they, they're not, they're not going to be well prepared for life. So as, we, as our kids interact with these different families, that's something we're just going to have to keep sending the same message to them. Like, this is how our team does it. This is how we do it. Um, it doesn't mean those are bad people. This is just how we chose to do it. And these are the reasons why. And you have to constantly remind them.